always on the lookout for interesting board games, we have combed through over 500 games and accessories that were released and restocked this month to bring you our top picks and suggestions, some best bets, my personal wish list, and a few wild cards. It's this month's Board Game Buyer's Guide. Chaz Marler from Watch It Played here, and with so many new releases and restocks announced each month, several games inevitably stand out from the crowd. So let's start our list this month by discussing several of these attention-grabbing games, beginning with a game based on the 16th century legend of the Golem of Prague, Golem. In this game, players create and grow these powerful creatures that then move around the neighborhoods throughout the city. But Care must be taken in doing so, because if a golem becomes too powerful, well, it destroys everything in its path. Golem features a unique action selection system that uses colored marbles to determine which actions are available to the active player, and how much of a benefit they'll receive for taking it. It's just one of the mechanisms in this beefy game that also incorporates dice and cards and drafting actions. So. For something a, you know, a little lighter and more chaotic, there's Free Radicals, which puts players in charge of one of ten fully asymmetrical factions, each with its own method of earning resources, power, and knowledge. For example, merchants use action points to travel to different markets as they increase their influence and efficiency. Couriers, on the other hand, use drones to pick up and deliver supplies, and entertainers unlock powerful abilities through card placement. Each character plays the game differently, but everyone still has the shared goal of developing and then chaining together powerful combos in order to gain the edge that they're going to need in order to win. Or, for something lighter still, you can flip the pages on the small press magazine Nothing to Talk About, which presents nine different games that two people can play on their phones over any messaging app. Now, each of the games is designed to provide a unique experience with a range of different styles and mechanisms. Whether this is played as an activity, an icebreaker, or as a way to explore a relationship, each game can be started by texting a photo of a single page of rules to your partner, and then Nothing to Talk About provides both of you with something to talk about. And speaking of things to talk about, the next attention-grabbing game is one that I actually already talked about on this month's On the Radar episode, The Siege of Rundar, which is a cooperative game for one to four dwarves who find themselves defending the walls of their stronghold and the treasures kept within it from an aggressive onslaught of orcs, goblins, and trolls who are all encroaching on the fortress's 3D walls. A deck-building system allows players to upgrade their weapons and tools, while they must simultaneously also dig a tunnel to escape with their treasure to safety. And another game about a central stronghold that's under siege, kind of, is the deluxe edition of the economic infrastructure-building game Clinic, in which players compete to construct the best healthcare facility as they hire doctors and nurses and maintenance staff build new modules, specialized services, and even invest in parking in order to meet the needs of the growing line of patients waiting to be admitted. Now, the original version of Clinic from 2014 was already a pretty substantial game in its own right, and this deluxe edition refines the experience with completely rewritten rules that come in two different versions, one for beginners and another for experts. There's also a solo mode, a collection of custom laser-cut components to decorate your board, and that is it. I misread the line, so it sounded like there was more that I was going to say about Clinic Deluxe Edition, but no, that's all. Another game, though, that I was going to talk about is this one, Decorum from Floodgate Games, which helped make this episode possible. This is a cooperative hidden information game where you and your partner share the same objective. Decorate your home in a way that makes you both happy. Problem is, though, that different things make each of you happy, and nobody says exactly what they need. Revealing that at what at first may seem like a straightforward logic puzzle game is actually a game about communication and compromise. The real challenge isn't just working together to solve the problems presented to you as you play, it's dealing with the frustration that occurs when your partner does something that completely destroys your carefully devised plan. By introducing and providing incentive to resolve these conflicts, Decorum mechanically encourages, even requires, a positive form of compromise among its players. Can you establish that compromise, or is the handwriting on the wall? Which 
I'm assuming I am going to have to clean off the wallpaper. Find out by following the link in this video's description to Discover Decorum, which is available right now. And while combing through the recent game releases, several always seem to find their way onto my personal wish list as well. So let's skim my own catalog of cardboard cravings, starting with the deck, bag, and pool building game Vigilante, in which valiant heroes fight back a swarm of villains running free throughout the city. Players accomplish this through a mix of managing various actions that they have available, building a tableau of cards that unlock different paths to accomplishing these goals, and social deduction to help ratchet up the tension. Overall, it sounds like Vigilante could offer an interesting, eclectic mix of rules to encourage players to all work together while also keeping them on their toes. And in a move that surprises no one. The next game added to my personal wish list this month was the brand new G.I. Joe role-playing game in which players create their own Joe, customizing it with a variety of attributes depicting their military training, personal traits, and role within the G.I. Joe organization. Now, some of us come into this game being fully prepared, having created their personal G.I. Joe character way back in 1984. <laughs> Redwood, Forest Stranger, reporting for duty. Now, the core book contains all the rules and guidance that any elite security force is going to need in order to get started defending freedom. Now, surely the publisher is also working on an expansion which will allow the characters to play as Cobra characters as well, right? <laughs> right? And keeping this nostalgia train roll, roll, rolling along is the next game that I discovered this month, Battletech Interstellar Operations Battle Force, the latest printing of the rules for games set in the Battletech universe that still pit massive mechanical militarized mechs against one another, but allow the battlefield to be zoomed out to the macro level, enabling players to assume the roles of the House of Lords as they fight to dominate entire sectors of the galaxy. Now, this version of Battletech supports large-scale games like Battalion vs. Battalion or invading a planet with multiple regiments. Grander still, invade a galactic sector compromising a dozen planetary systems. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Now they say, go big or go home, and Battle Force appears to take the already massive game of oversized robot rumbling and supersizes it even further. But okay. Returning to small-scale skirmishes, we have Combo Clash, a tactical tile-laying and combo-scoring game for two to four players who manipulate a grid of tiles by playing a variety of animal allies, each with a special ability that can be taken advantage of, if played in the right location, at the right time. For example, you could steal tiles back to your hand by playing hypnotic snakes, or smash through tiles with gorillas, or employ the crafty chameleon who can do anything and to every, he's, he's all things to all people. He's a chameleon. Ooh, the sense the, I, this appears to be a relatively quick and simple game. Difficult to describe apparently though, but simple and fun to play. All about trying to set yourself up to pull off the biggest cascading combo possible, which is always really satisfying to discover. Oh, and speaking of satisfying discoveries, brings us to the last game to join my wish list this month, Wise Guys, an area control game in which rival gangs of mobsters wheel, deal, talk, and fight to control locations where they buy and sell alcohol, help politicians get elected through whatever means necessary, and then get help in return or double-cross rival gangs. I'll be honest. I have played several different games based on being rum runners, skirting prohibition during the Roaring Twenties, and nearly all of them actually leave me a bit disappointed. So at first, I didn't pay wise guys much attention at all. But then I discovered that this is a re-implementation of 2014's Sons of Anarchy, Men of Mayhem, this game right here, which is fantastic. However, its theme can be rather adult at times. So if the same cutthroat gameplay of manipulation and backstabbery of Sons of Anarchy can be captured by wise guys in a somewhat more accessible theme, well then I'm going to be super excited to find out more and dig in. And if these videos help you find games to add to your own wish list, well then sharing this video would be something that I really dig as well. In the meantime though, let's continue on to our next segment, What's in Store, where we check which games are actually on store shelves in search of some hidden gems. 
I've visited at least a half a dozen different stores at this point for What's In Store segments, and I always find more games on the shelves than I have time to talk about. So we're going to do something a little bit different this episode. We're going to revisit several stores to cover several games that previously fell through the cracks, such as one of my favorite games of all time, and a great game to introduce people to the hobby with, Forbidden Island. In this game, players work together to reach and rescue several ancient artifacts off of an island before it sinks into the sea. As the water level rises, things become more and more difficult, requiring teamwork and compromises. Its cousin, Forbidden Desert, is another game that's based on a very similar concept, except this time taking place in a desert, of course, and with a couple more rules to make it slightly more complex. Personally speaking, I still prefer Forbidden Island over Desert, but they are both fantastic games, and like I said, they are great introductions to the hobby for, for new players. And every store that I visit, of course, has a variety of versions of Monopoly in stock. But if you're looking for a real twist on this game of property procurement, he said flawlessly, then I recommend the card game Monopoly Deal, which itself has its own variation, Monopoly Millionaire Deal, but that's Regardless, regardless. We are talking about Monopoly Deal, in which players push their luck to collect sets of colored properties, just like the original Monopoly, while also preventing their opponents from doing the same. There's booms, there's busts, plus it plays in about 15 to 20 minutes, adding to the allure of this card-driven entry in the Monopoly product line. If you haven't played Monopoly Deal, but you're in the market for a good little filler card game, definitely give it a try. And on that same shelf in that store was a whole series of mini micro little card games, the Paco Game Series, each of which is the size of a pack of gum and sports titles consisting of three letters, such as Bus, Spy, Dig, Fly, Orc, etc. Actually, etc., even though ETC is three letters, is not the name of one of the games. <laughs> I didn't even do that on purpose. There is a total of 16 different games in this series, none of which is named etc., each designed to be portable, affordable, and fun. In fact, I was going to include my suggestion of which ones to try first, but I'll be honest, there are as many different opinions about which games are people's favorites as there are different games in this line. So instead, if you have a chance to try out the pack of game series, hopefully you'll also be able to give several of them a pop to see which ones you like best. And then, on this shelf of retro games, I came across Pac-Man the Board Game, first published way back in the golden age of coin-operated arcade games, 2019. So, while the game itself may not be retro, it does appear to adhere to the retro roots of the IP that it's based on. In the game, one player controls Pac-Man, gobbling up as many pop-up power pellets as possible, while avoiding ghosts controlled by the other players. It seems to me that you can really tell that the publisher is leaning quite heavily into the authentic nostalgia factor in order to appeal to consumers, which is a, an approach that has been known to work. But Pac-Man here is not the only game to recently follow me home from the game store shelves. In fact, let's discover which other games I've recently added to my own shelves in our next segment, From Wishlist to Game Shelf. Right after a word from the other sponsor that helped make this episode possible, Marvel Gallery Prints from Upper Deck. Upgrade your gaming space with Upper Deck's Marvel Gallery Prints, a portfolio of over 70 premium, limited edition prints that feature all original art of fan-favorite comic and movie characters. Each of these releases are limited edition, one-time print runs printed on premium paper, with several even available on canvas. Some prints are also available in foil variants, such as the Infinity Gauntlet Act 1 and 2 variants, which are produced on patterned foil board, much like a foil trading card. So add some color, some character, some charisma to your gaming space with any of the prints in this collection. Follow the link in this video's description to find all these Marvel Gallery print designs and others exclusively at UpperDeckGallery.com, while supplies last for each of these limited edition prints. First is a game that I actually picked up while filming a What's in Store segment at my local Barnes & Noble, a game all about investing in the best routes during the golden age of air travel, Pan Am. Smooth. 
Now, throughout this game, players outbid rivals for lucrative landing rights in various cities across the globe, buy planes to service their growing network of locations, and, eventually, profit by partnering with plane purchasing powerhouse Pan Am, selling off portions of their own company stock to purchase the ever-encroaching aviation empire. This game was on my wish list when it came out a couple of years ago, but eventually it faded off as light other games came and grabbed the spotlight away from it. Then, I rediscovered it while filming at the store, and decided not to let this game slip through my fingers again, and I am glad that I did. While Pan Am here does share some similarities with Airlines Europe, also a fantastic game, it's still different enough that it doesn't feel like an imitation. There, there's enough ideas at play here to warrant both of them having a place on your game shelf. Now, the next game is going to bend the rules a little bit, because it's a game that I purchased for someone else's game shelf, the Allies expansion for Dominion. This 14th expansion for the deck-building behemoth includes 31 cards in the mix, including allies who will do favors, and split piles that can rotate. This copy here is actually going to my friend Mick, who is my game group's keeper of all things Dominion, and who, this weekend, I will be gaming with for the first time in two years. So, Mick, if you watch this segment before we see each other this weekend, uh, try to act surprised. Now, bending the rules even further is recent acquisition, Null und Nichtig, a bizarre little trick-taking card game from 2006, which I tracked down after being introduced to it at Aircon by our very own Matthew Jude. Now, this game right here, <laughs> right there, bends the rules of Board Game Buyer's Guide because it's not only on the floor, which hopefully someone will pick up for me, but it's also been out of print for years, so I had to go search for a second-hand copy of it. But I still thought that this game right here, thank you Magic Hands, was worth mentioning because this game is a blast. There are five different colored suits, each numbered 0 to 11, and each player's score is the sum of the highest numbered card in each color that they end up with at the end of the game. Strategically, this game can be as nuanced and subtle as a, a burlap sack full of sledgehammers, but if you can find it, I think it is totally worth taking a gamble on. And another gamble, of sorts, is my next playable personal purchase this month, Longshot the Dice Game, in which up to eight players push their luck at the horse races, buying horses, placing bets, influencing the race, and utilizing special abilities. There are many different ways to make money during the game, and in the end, the player that earns the most of it wins. But you know, in a way, everybody wins, because Longshot the Dice Game here has been getting very positive reviews. But you know, in a much more correct way, only one player actually wins. And really, doesn't that make us all winners? No. No, it does not. And now, the last game that I sunk my teeth into this month is the push-your-luck deck-building game The Hunger, in which voracious vampires must roam the countryside hunting and feasting upon delicious humans, and then race back to their castle's crypt before sunrise. But the more they hunt, the slower they become, which makes it increasingly more difficult to return to safety before it's too late. By challenging players to a race across the board and back again, while they also complete objectives and collect cards that will balance the performance of their individual decks, which propel them, this game right here seems to share a lot in common with the beloved dungeon diving game Clank. Except that the cards added to a deck in The Hunger typically hinder, rather than improve, a deck's operation. Games of The Hunger also last a set number of turns, as opposed to Clank's approach of continuing until the players themselves decide to start wrapping the game up. Plus, there's some additional elements that could comparatively increase The Hunger's complexity. Even so, Makes me wonder if this game, along with its upcoming expansion, have what it takes to drive a stake through the heart of Clank and replace it in gamers' collections? Well, personally speaking, I'm not yet convinced that it does, but I do think that if you enjoy Clank, well, then the hunger is definitely worth giving a nibble as well. But now, let's take a bite out of this month's best bets. Retail releases with either a proven track record, rave reviews, or both. If you're on the hunt for a new hobby board game, well, then in my opinion, any one of the following is worth looking into. And first up is Boone Lake, in which a group of pioneers explore the landscape, build houses and settlements, raise cattle, produce raw materials, and develop an infrastructure along the shores of this secluded lake. 
Now, the game is designed to play in such a way that each session can progress completely differently. Additionally, each action needs to be considered very carefully since the other players also benefit from whatever's chosen. Now, all of these things work together to give Boon Lake a lot of player interaction and replayability, as a winning strategy in one game may not have a ghost of a chance in the next. And if you also like, if you made chance upon ghosts, next game is the Ghosts of Betwixt, a lighthearted cooperative horror dungeon crawler set in 1990s Midwestern suburbia, wrapped around a mystery, dipped in suspense, with a serving of storytelling on the side, garnished with a dash of dice rolling. An analogy totally worked the whole way through. In the game, one to four players team up to explore a challenging dice-driven, well there's the dice, story-driven campaign fueled by unlockable loot, dice, multiple talent trees for each player, stat customization, and legacy elements, resulting in a humorous but engaging expedition into the unknown. Or, if macabre mysteries aren't your style, Escape instead to a friend-filled forest in Creature Comforts, in which an array of animals spend the spring, summer, and fall gathering different goods from the woodlands and collecting items to make their home more inviting during the snowy winter months. Each round, players send furry family members out to various locations in an attempt to gain supplies. And in the end, the family that has created the most comfortable den wins a season of warm winter nights and the game. And another game that we think will strike a chord with players is Bardsung, which takes place in a branching, labyrinthine dungeon filled with dangerous enemies, wandering monsters, challenging puzzles, and valuable treasure. A Bardsung was designed to provide an experience similar to roguelike video games, with procedurally generated maps making each dungeon crawl completely different. And the campaign provides opportunities to upgrade character stats and unlock new abilities. There is a metric ton going on in Bardsung to discover and explore, which may be why players are singing its praises. And if you've ever played the popular tile placement game Azul, then you may also be interested in its newest iteration, Azul Queen's Garden, in which players are tasked with arranging a magnificent royal garden by deploying plants, trees, and ornamental features. Now, this game here starts with elements established in the original Azul, like tile drafting, pattern building, and set collection, and then expands on those concepts while also introducing new boards, bonuses, and hexagonal tiles. That's how I'm pronouncing it. Hexagonal. I hope that's right. The original Azul continues to have a constant presence among games that people are logging plays of, and I'm sure that Azul Queen's Garden has the potential to be just as popular. And that is this month's Board Game Buyer's Guide. But for more of this month's hottest board card and tabletop games, continue on to Moment 10, where we're counting them all down. Or check out any of Watch Play's other informational, instructional videos. <laughs> Thanks, I'm gonna get a drink of water, and I'll see you over there.